Hello everybody, welcome back to another day of Pester Quest. Uh, we only have one friend to befriend today, um, and that is our boy Dave, in the volume titled, A King's Feast of Ass. A King's Feast of Ass. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not the weirdest thing to come out of Dave's mouth, so I can't really say I'm surprised by that, but here we are. Okay, let's get right into it, shall we? All right, how's the volume look? That looks fine. Let's be real. As much as you enjoy our new friends, they all seem a little lonely. Like, maybe they don't have any friends besides the ones they talk to online. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Is online relationship a reasonable alternative or more to more a reasonable alternative to a more traditional face-to-face -face friendship? Our friendships, and dare you say, families, that you choose, not just as important, if not more so than those you're able to touch and feel? Damn. Maybe getting a little too real. You decide not to think about it too hard. But if you're being honest with yourself... Ooh, is this like a... This is like a remix of, uh... Dave Rise Up... Of the song from Dave Rise Up, isn't it? Alright. If you're being honest with yourself, maybe you aren't terribly interested in the greater context of found family and interpersonal relationships in the instant message era. You've got a fervor, and the only cure for this disease called friendship is to mildly inconvenience a few teenagers. Says, I prefer. Hang on, I gotta move my briska. <laughs> I have a little desktop fe I have a little desktop feature that just has it's just a PNG of Riska on my uh internet browser, and sometimes she gets in the way. That's yeah, pretty quiet. Okay, I'll turn the volume up a little bit on the music. There we go. Okay. Back to the... Okay, music's a little bit louder now. Let's mildly inconvenience some teenagers. As much of a delight as it has been to make a young boy face his existential future, rob a woman of her booze stash, and then self-reflect upon the value of contextual relationships, it's all felt a little heavy-handed. <laughs> what you need now is an emotional palate cleanser. <laughs> there are two kids left in this tour, tour de fours, and both sound like they, they make ex exquisite friends. Time to go full-on easy mode here. You've heard so much about this guy, you feel like you've got this one in the goddamn bag. With confidence, you zap yourself upwards. Oh, oh yeah, let's, uh, oh yeah, easy mode. We'll just jump right into, uh, the, <laughs> the horribly introverted, abused 13-year-old. Just burst right into his apartment in Austin, Texas. I'm sure everything will go fine. <laughs> what, what am I looking at? Oh, you're already here. <laughs> it's, it's not even that funny, but I'm laughing anyway. Uh, you are already here. Wherever here is. It is blisteringly hot. You and I instantly regret your choice of apparel. Why did you instinctively put your hoodie back on after all it, over all this? Robe. Gown. Cat, don't play with that. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're still wearing the bathrobe from Rose's house, but now we're wearing our hoodie over it. That's, that's fantastic. You're the mailman, or... How did we meet him? Um, apparently we just popped onto the roof, and Dave was already here. So, there you go. Mail. Person. This must be Dave. Uh, Rose mentioned he talks a lot, and as you start to explain it, it as you start to explain it, it becomes apparent he's having this conversation at you, not with you. <laughs> wow, it is unbelievably humid. Person adjacent. Anyway. Amber told me you'd show up eventually. 
Which I never doubt for a second since one of the core tenets of the United States Postal Service is that you visit four extremely specific and spread out teenagers while sweating all over yourself. Practically a crime not to be increasingly moist while out here delivering letters on the roof of a sky rise. Which, as you know, is the most effective and legal way to drop off the post. Okay, cat, you can't be playing with my headphones. Sorry, they're not your toy. This is your toy. Play with this. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, he was antsy. Yes, wrestle, wrestle with your toy on top of, on top of my blind luck. Mailbag. <laughs> Oh, that's right, I do have a mailbag right there, uh, which is perfect for this whole mailman charade thing that we're doing. Mail person, whatever. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, have at you. All right, which, as you know, is the most effective and legal way to drop off the post. Clamier than New England potluck and wander around on the roof. With no package. <laughs> hmm. It's actually really cool how much this kid seems to talk at you, but you're barely listening. Has the sun always been that red? Has the sky always been that wavy? Nah, it's just an Austin, Texas thing. <laughs> uh, are you alright? You're hardly alright. Uh, you, you, you tug at the collar of your, mo your soggy mess of a hoodie. This is an overwhelming, oppressive heat. An almost impenetrable air fills your lungs as you try and take a series of shallower and shallower breaths. The world fades to white. <laughs> uh, ah, I didn't have time to make the Skyrim joke. Uh, when you wake up, you're sitting propped up on a cheap futon in front of a large television. A rough approximation of a person does an elaborate series of controlled falls, uh, culminating what you can only describe as skateboarding for assholes. Oh, oh the memories. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Okay, hang on, let's just, let's just take a look at, what was it, H? That was it. Let's just take, oh, this. Oh, that's Dave's house. You know, they're playing, the, they're playing the skateboarding game. There are puppets everywhere. Oh, gal's right there. Of course. Eh. Eh. Um, love the, uh, Dirk's login sign. Ah, uh, yes, it's very near the start. We literally just started. <laughs> Yep, we haven't even made any, we haven't even gone to the first choice yet. We are just introducing ourselves to Dave. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba. On your left, Dave and Dave exists in a quantum state that is both somehow sitting and laying down, but also neither. With the precision of a Swiss watchmaker, he definitely presses a series of buttons that makes the awful polygon man on screen t pose and fall <laughs> fall face forward into the ground. Seconds later, his skateboard flips helplessly next to him. He doesn't look away from the screen as he speaks. So, uh, I guess you lived. <laughs> it's not. It's not that I'm in invested, but John might be sad. It's. <laughs> I talked about this last week when he was when uh, Dave was talking to Rose before, but Dave's lack of punctuation makes him surprisingly difficult to read out loud. <laughs> anyway. Like, of all the trolls I've had to read out loud, I probably had more difficulty with Dave than anybody else so far. And so this is good. And so you're gonna have to bear with some, uh, tripping over weird line deliveries, because I don't know what the fuck he's <laughs> Give me a comma! Sunglasses bastard. Alright. Classic John. You try to emulate his incredibly casual body language as you slide your body down the futon. Your legs already barely touch the ground. <laughs> yeah. That guy's a dork. I tell him everything he knows. You ask him if he you ask him if he taught him how to be a dork. You affect a completely uninterested face, as though the sickness of your third degree burn is not the single most excruciating moment of your life. Third degree burn. It's not. It's not that clean. Whatever. <laughs> God damn. Owned in my own house. Owned within an inch of my life. I'm on the edge, reaching out to that land. Reaching out that hand of friendship and this chucklehead lived long, long live the long live the king's me. <laughs> Thousands of gazelles trampled my useless body as Jonathan Taylor Thomas's persona watches on. Who will who will raise Simba now? Who's going to teach him about combat? 
No, God, don't bring. No, don't bring this. Don't bring this back, please. Okay. Um. By the way, I put your nasty sweatshirt on the on the. I put your nasty sweatshirt on the shower <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> I don't need to remind. I don't need to remind of that running gag from the epilogues. Thank you very much. Ugh. <laughs> All right. By the way, put your nasty sweater in the sh sweatshirt in the shower. Did I skip a line? Yeah, I skipped. It's, <laughs> it, it's. I skipped the line because I had non flashbacks. Um, so let's see. Uh, what do we want to go with? Uh, the shower? Question mark or dope? Dope, 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 dope. <laughs> I. Um. I, I actually. Yeah. Yeah. The, love was not in there. Yeah, it was just combat, philosophy, life, and then it moved on to the next line. So yeah, they, they did not, they did not actually say love. I did not skip the word love. It was just not in there, just to be clear. Anyway, I legit have no idea which of these is the correct option, because I don't know. I. All right, uh, let's just just take it from the top. What? The shower. Yeah, it smelled, so I tossed it in there. Ran the hot water. You can thank me later. Won't somebody need that? You don't want to put anyone out. You've already taken up so much of their hospitality. Also, you don't think that's how you're supposed to wash clothes. Nah, my bro's out for a while. It happens sometimes. Probably puppet related. He avoids the laundry minefield by opting for the nuclear option. Though you guess that makes sense. There are a lot of puppets around, which strikes you as extremely normal and reasonable, and not a little whack. Yeah, puppets rule. End of story. <laughs> Shit, close the book on that one. Time for Betty Bye, kid. Little man bought to get his eight, eight to ten on snug as a bug on a, in a fucking rug. Tuck the fucking tight. <laughs> Tuck the fun in, fuck in tight. Blah. Tuck the fuck in tight as can be on his way to slumberland. Jesus Christ, Dave, it's hard to read that loud. Nemo who? Never fucking heard of him. Shit, hold on. <laughs> he, he sits up to fish something out of his pocket. Ah, a palm pup. A, a phone. He gets a phone from his pocket. You're not sure what you were thinking. As a perfectly normal human being with a 100% real and tangible earth, you know what a cell phone is. From a 100% real and tangible earth, you know what a cell phone is. Uh, what is that, a, a first gen? Yikes. <laughs> the memories, the memories are slipping through. He, he ignores your jab and you pretend not, he ignores your jab and you pretend not to be reading over his shoulder, though it probably could not be more obvious that you are. Uh, okay, John. Hi, did you meet the mailman? My guy, we have been we have gone over this time and time again. How do I put this in terms you can understand? Have you ever met a mailman in your life? <laughs> Even in that shitty Costner flick you love the fuck you love, the dude has decency to at least wear the outfit. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I knew you watched it. No, I never waste my precious time watching even a single one of the zealous garbage you try to wreck me. I'm just stating cold, cold stone facts. It is very heartwarming to see Act One, Dave. I agree. I just read an outline. I just read an outline and browsed a few review sites to see what people were saying. I know it sounds like that probably took a lot more time and effort than just watching the movie itself. What I'm saying is, this isn't a mailman. I don't even think this is a person. You have thrust a person style. You have you have thrust a person styled entity into my life under the alluring gaze of partial delivery. Which, if I'm understanding right, this clown isn't even good at it on account of how bad they bungled the only delivery that mattered. At least Lalan had the good sense to be skeptical of this absolute fucking tomfoolery. <laughs> Don't be a dick. The mailman's cool. John, I cannot stress this enough. You wouldn't know cool if it bit you right in the ass. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> The dopest person at the dopest person you've ever met chomping away, just really getting up in there, ice cold and <laughs> ice cold and ear deep in a king's feast of ass. What the, what the hell are you talking about? 
Try to keep up, Egbert. This will be in the quiz. He looks uncharacteristically startled as he glances back in your direction. Find you only a few in inches away, adamantly reading his private conversation with a friend. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're like a cat. <laughs> How? How much of that did you see? You definitely didn't see him making a playfully flirtatious chat with a longtime friend, if that's what you're he's asking you. Dave desperately tries to refocus on his game hijinks. He makes his character, who you can now see it, he is named uh, Tony Chalk, uh, to do uh, do what can be described as some insane flits, flits and shit. Masterful. There's nothing at all flir flirtatious about two bros discussing eating ass. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yep. This is Act One Dave, all right. <laughs> Just being straight as two arrows who are also straight. <laughs> uh, sure. Sure. Yeah, but someone in the chat saying that uh, Dave is, uh, is so deep in denial about the puppets. Buddy, that's not the only thing Dave is in denial about. Dave is in denial about many, uh, many things. I mean, how would that even work? It wouldn't. That's how. <laughs> That's all there really is to say about that. As we have established previously, whenever Dave says, That's all there really is to say about that, there is really much, much more to say about that. Uh, you reassure him that it's okay to be honest about his feelings. You're not here to judge him. John seems very nice. They would be cute together. <laughs> yeah? Together? Like how? No, please don't, please, please don't tell me. I actually don't even give a single shit about this line of thought. You might not have picked up on this, but... I'm definitely 100% not a homosexual. Hmm. <laughs> Cat. Where, where, where are you doing? Huh. Don't push your luck, MSBI reader. That line does sound very familiar, doesn't it? This was a line said... Um... This is a paraphrasing a line said by John way back when, uh, when Carcat started uh, black flirting with him. So, hmm. so like, are we, are we building up towards uh, John having some revelations about himself with this little line of thought? I mean, I mean, you you've been on Twitter, you've seen the June Egbert stuff. Pretty much crawling and moist volu pretty much craw pretty much crawly and moist voluptuous hose in the regular. What? Hose are real? <laughs> Hell yeah, hoes are real. And they're damp? Shit, it's like I gotta start at square one with this hapless asshole. What school do you go to? The other astonishment you feel at this earth shattering revelation sends your con sen sends your consciousness for a spin. But you manage to steal yourself. This isn't your first tough customer. You tell Dave that hose is a general neutral term. Anyone can be a hoe if they believe in themselves. Hoe-like behavior knows no limits. No master? What? Okay. <laughs> Despite just learning that they are real, me real mere moments ago, you're confident that a hoe can be... what? That to be a hoe is to be free? <laughs> what? Oh. It's pretty dope, I guess. It's not... Hmm. <laughs> it's not like I've never thought of it. I mean, for the ironic payoff. <laughs> Is Dave expressing a desire to be a hoe? I... Uh, okay. Just... Just me mentally trying to keep up with the Dave conversation. Standard. Standard affair, folks. Standard, standard, uh... Standard affair. I mean, for the ironic payoff, obviously. Can you imagine the look on his face? His best bro coming up to him with some dire news. I look, I, I look up at him. I, I look up at him, eyes red with tears, as I pat a hand on his shoulder and say, "John, not to alarm you, but I am gay now. Your clueless di dipshit wiles have finally won me over." <laughs> I, uh, there are so many fanfics like this already. <laughs> hmm. No, that sucks. <laughs> Wait, what was that JoJo pose he just struck there? Hang on. <laughs> okay. okay, what? 
Oh, no, I can't. I can't back it up and... <laughs> Sorry, I just got... I got... Uh... <laughs> His speech has become quicker than normal as he stands and paces frantically around the apartment in a JoJo pose. Completely abandoning his poor Tony. <laughs> I mean, and this is purely hypothetical. If I liked anyone, eh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrong time hero for uh, Ziwardo. Yes, hello, Kitty. Welcome to the welcome to the stream. We are enjoying. We are enjoying this sick JoJo pose, as as Dave has his uh, sudden revelation, as Dave has his sudden existential crisis about his own sexuality about seven acts too early. Yep. <laughs> All right. If I liked anyone, which I don't, and I cannot be too fucking smooth to, t to tie myself down. It would probably be another one of my friends. Uh. You know, you, you don't know her. She's not from around here. So that basically means I can't have a thing. A thing? With Jade? Are we... Okay. <laughs> just, just, just throw out bait for all the ships. At least I hope he's talking about Jade. For John. Case closed. Oh, God. <laughs> By unanimous decision, the jury finds in favor of the defendant. Oh, God. <laughs> Dave? It's, it's cool. I know we're hitting you with, like, seven acts of character development in one scene, but it's gonna be okay, bro. It's gonna be okay. Me. And see, it seems to you like he's got a lot to think about, and maybe this is a little heavy for the first meeting. You already feel emotionally exhausted. No fucking way. We're, no fucking way we're in this long haul part. We're in this for the long haul partner. We are entrenched in this shit. You and me are funny on the front lines, <laughs> front front lines of this, of this. The isn't he, uh, is he, isn't he? World War One. Oh, okay. I, I see. You and me are funny on the front lines of is he, isn't he? World War One. Troops are spilling over the embankment, armed in the teeth with various literature and pamphlets. I'm already learning so much about myself. Oh, uh, is that good? The enemy is at the gates of my sexuality, and our air support is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> if I don't make it, tell my wife or maybe husband I died like I lived. Completely baller in every conceivable way. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's gonna, that's gonna be it. Mm. We're gonna see that again in future epilogue stuff, I just know it. We're gonna see A. Dave die with that as his final words. This conversation train has... <laughs> This conversation train has not just gone off the rails, but has crashed in headfirst into the nearest village. Uh, just some unspecified hamlet fallen prey to this out-of-control ride. Well, that's... He just described every conversation with Dave. <laughs> Poor bisexual Dave. <laughs> this is no longer a conversation you have any say in. You desperately look around the room for anything else to talk about. So, uh... Puppets, right? Oh, no, 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 no. You fucked up, mailman. You opened the, you, you open the floodgates of introspection. We are balls deep in the discourse waters and there's nobody to blame but yourself. <laughs> it's like that. That is such an anime pose right there. <laughs> he stops pacing to look contemplative. His voice lowers to a mumble. Is he still talking to you? Does he still want to talk about this or not? Is it... It's, it's nearly impossible to tell. Now, okay, hear me out. I do have to come up with a gay name. Do, do, do I have to come up with a gay name now, or can I still be Dave? I'm thinking Gave, <laughs> but let's not kid ourselves. That's the amateur choice. Obviously, my full title would be Gave, would be Gave Strider Dick Rider. <laughs> okay, that's enough. There's got to be a better way to weigh into this than this. You are, you are so tired. <laughs> Gonna, we're just gonna leave. 
Yeah, it's just, when Dave gets like this, you kind of just gotta let him roll through it. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Alright, well, and, uh, and that was Dave's sexu- crisis of sexuality. <laughs> Fantastic. So all that was from the first choice, yeah. Um, Alright, so that was the uh, shower failure. Let's uh, go with uh, dope. Dope, dope, dope. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. You're definitely the sort of person to say, who says dope, often and casually. You tell them dopely that you are a person who is not caught up in the small details of decorum or personal propriety. property. Hi, cat. Where are you going to settle? Please don't knock over my mic. In fact, it doesn't bother you at all that he took your, your, only, your, your only worldly possessions and tossed them in a shower while you were unconscious. That's some light corpse loony among... What's some light corpse loony among bros? <laughs> okay. Uh, while it dries, you can wear one of my bro shirts. Oh, God. <laughs> Cat, get away from my mic. I'm gonna start making noise. And I like and I like cute kitty noises, like ugly... Ugly brushing against the microphone noises. There you go. Play with that. While it dries, you can wear one of my bro shirts. So does MSPA Reader have literally any other clothes? I don't think so. I think it's just the hoodie and uh, now the Lalonde bathrobe. Usually has a fresh, usually has a fresh stash hidden in there and hidden in here. Dope, tight, slick. Nothing weird about hiding some shirts in the living room. Just gonna have a look see. Holy shit! There are a lot of puppets in here. Yeah, dude, puppets own. Enough said. My bro's got the market cornered on puppet-based endeavors. Backed up against the wall like a feral beast hissing for more plush-oriented content. The little guy's probably just scared. Just wanted to pat- just wanted to protect his nest and mouth-to-mouth feed his- feed its babies, only the choicest puppet smut for a reasonable fee. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck does any of that mean? <laughs> oh, thank you. MSPA reader understands my pain. Uh, you look back to Dave, but he's on his phone. God damn, that's so cool, actually. There's just something weird about this whole setup that you just can't put your finger on. Uh, for one, you can't seem to find any secret shirts anywhere. It's all just puppets and pluses and DJ equipment. Oh my. Yeah, with my bro, you have to think of the potential for ironic payoff. That guy's always one step ahead. Just when you think you've got it figured out, uh, it was all just some trap to think to make you think you've gotten his goat. But that goat is long gone. Makes you think maybe there never was a goat. Maybe it was some other barnyard animal all along. You've been duped into looking for a goat like some dumb asshole. Or maybe the goat gets you really su- Or maybe the goat gets you really subvert the- get- Or maybe the goat gets you really subvert the whole thing. You take a second to wonder if he was really using the term ironic correctly in that instance. By, diction- by, by dictionary definition, yes. A goat getting you is the opposite of how the situation should go. Thank God you settled that. As you're about to reassure Dave that this joke tracks, <laughs> you catch some movement in the corner of your eye. Was that... Was that a camera? You couldn't have... Po- whoop. It, it could have possibly been a camera. No, oh, no. There it is again. There's a camera coming out of the ice dispenser. Oh yeah, this shit. <laughs> oh, the memories. Cat. Yeah. Look, the cloud sword, the, the buster sword is even back there, just like it was before. Um, a puppet on the... Cat, yeah, if you jump up there, I'm going to have to rescue you. You know that, right? My cat's looking like he wants to jump up on top of the fridge. And when he jumps up on top of the fridge... I'm gonna, oh, camera's over there. My cat is looking like he wants to jump up on top of the fridge, and whenever he does that, he needs help getting down, because he's a baby. He is baby. <laughs> we're, it were as softly as you approach. Yeah, there he goes. You're gonna stay up there until the end of this let's play, you know that, right? Okay. Have fun up there, kitty. It were as softly as you approach. It's mechanical eye trained on you. How long has this thing been watching? Is this Dave's? You lean in to take a closer look, but your foot catches on something. You fall flat in your face. Dave seems too engrossed in the conversation he's having on his phone to pay you much of much mind. 
occasionally mumbling something out loud a few times before presumably typing it out. You search for whatever it was for whatever it was that made you beef it so royally. You know, beef it. Like, fall down. That's a real phrase that humans say. A small trip rider stands taut a few inches off the ground. You must not have disturbed it enough to set off whatever contraption it's attached, attached to, apparently. Oh yeah, sometimes they're more of a psycho. You think, oh fuck me, I definitely beefed it, which is a real phrase that is real. <laughs> And you sit there, waiting on bated breath, preparing to be fucked deep in velvety marionette, marionette dick. And it never comes. You go the rest of the day just waiting for the payoff for your bit dipshit mistake. And it never comes. You wake up in cold sweats for weeks, yearning for a release that will never find you, and it hits you. You've been fucking bamboozled by the master, yet again. That's called abuse, Dave. <laughs> There is no elaborate booby, booby trap. No Rube Goldberg device set to enact a series of complicated shenanigans ultimately resulting in being buried alive in Kermit the, Fro Frog, Kermit the Frog's plush uh, amphibious doll. Beautiful, really. Damn, bro, you live like this? I know, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. Keeps me on my toes. Heels never even met the ground. The prima, ba the prima ballerina with a head full of dreams and nothing to lose. God's, gi God's gift applies rippling a to God's gift applies ripping a straight tasty tour and layer of my adoring fans. They go apeshit for this sort of thing, but it just but it's just another day in the life uh, of dense your extraordinaire Dave Strider. <sighs> Haven't fallen for a trap like that since I was a baby. Trained. Real rookie mistake. Man, man, looking try. Man, man, looking tired, maybe. Drained. Oh my God, is he mumble rapping at? <laughs> is he mumble rapping at you? This at you? This is the greatest day of your life. Got, got more plush ass than a puppet lost and found. <laughs> Ain't trying to drop into illest fires. <laughs> I really do love just. All of the artwork in this pest request has been amazing so far. I love it. King Strider drops the illest, illest fires. Cause heavy's the crown. Rhyme and puppet with puppet. <laughs> call, call that puppet rhymes. Killing all ventriloquists. Puppet on puppet crimes. He goes on like this for some time in what could be described as bars of a of a similar caliber. The narrative focus shifts to your inner thoughts out of necessity because it turns out writing raps is really hard. <laughs> isn't exactly great, but you're not really a rap expert, despite what your social media opinions might imply. Nonetheless, you count... None, 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 unless you count, uh, hatched, hatched... Hatched to dance, which of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Wait. What? What does that mean? Why did you think that? Uh, the memories. The memories are coming back. The whole scenario feels a little weird and familiar to you. All these kids feel familiar to you. You learn something new about Dave, and you feel like you already sort of knew it. You can't place it. Despite having met Dave no less than no less than half an hour ago, something feels just slightly off about him. Something about his action feels so performative in nature, like he's pantomiming me in front of an audience. As Dave continues to rap, you remember that you are in front of an audience. You cast a glance over at the camera, but also at the hundreds of stuffed little creatures staring at you with their lifeless eyes. Amidst your revelation, we check back in on Dave because I'm getting paid to write this, so I should probably make with the fucking jokes already. Master of my tool on the Ace Hardware. Now I'm our host and the gardener. Yard core, yard care. Nice. <laughs> the chaotic and surreal nature of the scene sends a shock of nervous energy down your spine. You feel alarmingly new to have comfort and familiar warmth of your sweater. There is something about it that grounded you, something that felt like home. Dave concludes his masterpiece with an elaborate series of yeahs and uhs, just as you see the camera turn away from him ever so slightly to focus on something else uh, before retreating back into the ice dispenser. It almost makes you look a little bashful. It's kind of adorable. It almost looks a makes it look a little bashful. It's kind of adorable, actually. Despite the fanfic you've written in your head about a cool kid and his new best robot friend, the reality of the situation sets in. You have yet to make friends with this character, and, and, and it all has felt uh, surreal and weird to you. 
Maybe it's something to zap back and hard reset this continuity to try again. Well, well, what does that mean? Feels like I'm missing an important part of the puzzle here. Oh, did you read, uh, hear that? How does this work exactly? Sometimes you just narrate what you're thinking. Kind of a baller move. Why has nobody called you out on this before? <laughs> you put your hand on the counter to stabilize yourself and your fingers brush against something con uh, clandestinely polo. Just barely poking out from a bench, a uh, pile of discount plush nobodies is a neatly retail folded shirt. Wear the shirt, don't wear the shirt. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so did we wear the shirt and take one step closer to becoming Dirk or do we not wear the shirt um it's like what it's like if we wear the shirt Dirk is gonna possess us and we're all gonna die I don't know uh let's let's put on the shirt and see where that goes that's sure to be emotionally distressing for Dave obviously you're gonna put the shirt on you don't want to be the only one not wearing a cool shirt do you need some privacy not sure where one layer of you ends and the other begins. Doubt the audience cares. What? Oh. Yes, behind camera like this is kind of fucking whack. Uh, you say so pointedly your sprite even shows up on screen for a second. Yeah, that's right. We went all out for this one. <laughs> uh, you were wondering if there is a place here that wasn't under constant surveillance. Like, how does this kid take a shit in peace? Uh, you know... You know everyone's thinking it. Dope line of questioning that I'm sure the public at large is eager to know the answer to, but my room isn't wired up, no. About to get fired up, though. <laughs> Menagerie's multiplying with bit. Maybe not this second. Alright, damn. You accompany Dave down the hallway to his room. You hear the shower as you pass the bathroom, and you peek in to see your hoodie and nice gown on the tile being uselessly wetted by a low-pressure stream. You're welcome, by the way. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dave's room. I don't like it's the it's the felt, all of them, and then the two uh, two rat bots. Was that picture there before? Cause like I know they exist in the Alpha timeline, but I don't remember the, if they existed here. I think they did. I think that poster was here before. I think so. Don't really remember. Hey. There are too many little details to pick out. Um, Dave motions uh, you to go in. Yeah, the poster was there. Okay, I thought so. so yeah, we're still and we're still not seeing the wall drawings too. That is another interesting point. Um, you know, they're they're none of the the crazy scrawls of the subconscious. Dave motions for you to go in first, giving you the privacy you need to change into an extremely starched polo shirt and nothing else. This collar will not go down. This is absolutely what somebody in 2009 would think is fresh as hell. You look around the room for a bit. There's so many things in here. This would be a 13 year old's wet dream, but to you it just seems a little... much. It feels like a bunch of things someone thinks they should like. Let the fan out reflect that you put on the shirt at this point. There isn't a mirror in here, but you can tell that this is someone... Yeah, but you can tell that this is someone out there's idea of a look. <laughs> he's got apple juice. Of course, he's got apple juice. The door opens and Dave is standing there, but not walking in. He leans up against the door frame, sipping a juice. Where'd he get that juice? What the fuck? Hallway juice, my man. Hallway juice. What, you don't keep food stuff stashed around your house? What do you do when you get hungry? No, that, that's not it. You, I mean, you mean you usually just keep it in the fridge or whatever. Too obvious. Somebody help this useless clown. You assure Dave that you've met many clowns in your day and only some of them were useless. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was a funny thing about the friend sims, how like, th there really was like a heavy weight towards the uh, clowns, if you may recall. What was it, like five out of 24 of the uh, friends were purple bloods? Six if you count the twins separately, something like that. Name one. You, you... You can't. Why'd you say that? 
Browns are awful. Everybody knows this. Guess he's got. Guess he's got you there. You know, despite the overwhelming plush decor for core, core of the rest of the house, there is a distinct lack of puppets in here. That's yeah, more of a bros thing. Nah, not that they aren't deliciously sick. Deliriously sick. Just a whole hospital full. Just a whole hospital ward full of the illest children uh, you ever seen. Each one more up to. Each one more up to pop than the last one. Up to pup? Yeah, pup. Like puppets. You're gonna be honest, it doesn't really seem like his heart's in it. How do you mean? Well, it's just that he doesn't really seem to be all into puppets. He is a little performative. Well, I guess I got my own stuff I'm into. Like if I were to rank it one to ten, I'd say puppets are probably puppets are probably a solid seven. Got this kid on the ropes. Just one more push. In fact, you'd even go so far as to say that the puppet thing sort of sucks. It is extremely weird. The cameras, the hiding things like an animal, an animal it all seems a little, you know, whack. Hi, <laughs> cat. Do you need to be rescued? You can make it. You can do it. There you go. He made the jump. Good kitty. For a while, he just seems to look at you, almost as if he's sizing you up. There's a long stretch where, Le where Dave doesn't break eye contact with you as he finishes his cute little juice and crumples it up. He takes an ambitious shot at the trash can and misses by about seven and a half feet. Damn. I could have sworn I had game. You're throwing me off, man, man. Yes, this is correct. You are the faithful employee of the Postal Service. I mean, I definitely believe you, but let's say I didn't. Let's say I had a cool friend who... Yeah, come here, Kate. Alright, let's say it in. Let's say I had a cool friend who... Even though they're too cool to care about details like this... They were a little skeptical of this whole situation. Maybe they'd want some proof that you were who you said you were. Before they let you get any closer to their friends. Just throwing that hypothetical out there. What proof could he possibly need? Say the oath. <laughs> Honestly, it would not surprise me if Dave knows the mailman oath, just sort of because. What? The oath. The mail oath. Uh, look, the thing about that is, I mean, unless you aren't really a mailman. You know, I had, I had a feeling, uh, I had a feeling, uh, questioning the, uh, puppets was going to be bad. Sort of like when we tried to, uh, psychoanalyze, uh, Rose's love of wizards. Behind his sunglasses, Dave's eyes shift ever so slightly to what you might describe as a less, inti less in intimately harrowing situation as a moderately priced looking man. But behind his sunglasses, Dave's eyes shift ever so slightly to what you might describe in a less immediately harrowing situation as a moderately as a moderately priced looking male katana mounted on his wall. You realize that maybe now isn't the best time to come clean about your impeccable ruse. You can't believe you've managed to put yourself in mortal peril yet again. You wordlessly chuckle and shake your head. Oh, the situations you get into. <laughs> Dave, not privy to your pri private thoughts for once, looks on. Why, of course you can recite the mailman oath, you say with a confidence that is as misplaced as it is un as, that is as misplaced as it is unfounded. You perk up. Now is the time to shine. Maybe it's the popped collar, but, but you are feeling good about this one. You got this. You have lied to tons of kids. Uh, one more and it will be smooth sailing from here on out. Uh, you open your mouth and there's a brief moment where everything feels like it's going to be okay. You immediately start sobbing and crumpling and crumple into a disgusting mess on the floor. <laughs> oh lord. Uh oh. Fuck. Uh, wow. Okay. Jesus Christ. You're not really a mailman. You never were. You don't have a real man for your fraud. You don't know how the stamps work. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, just. Okay. It's a. 
It's gonna be right there. Uh, <laughs> Dave squats, squats down next to your deflated body and pats you a little awkwardly and what he assumes is your shoulder. Uh, you say you're, you're sorry you tricked him. You just wanted to impress him because John said he was cool. <laughs> it's a... It's, it's fine, I guess. Fuck, dude. Get a hold of yourself. He tries to he tries to get you up, but you are desperately clinging to his shirt, confessing everything, confessing to made up crimes you didn't even commit. Look, my guy, we uh, we all make mistakes. Please stop whatever this is. I'm pretty sure you are harmless, and I don't think you actually kill anyone with your ass or wherever an accessory to burning down an alien mall or whatever insane shit you just said. <laughs> well. See that's a, the, see that's an interesting question because of the nature of paradox space, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, you kind of got caught up in the moment and just started saying made up shit. You ask Dave if he's mad at you. Nah, dude, get up. Dave helps you back up onto your feet. You come clean in an only slightly more controlled and dignified way this time. You explain how there are these huge gaps in your memory and that you somehow ended up with these abilities that let you traverse space, time, and sometimes even reality itself. Dave doesn't say much for a change and doesn't seem like he's listening at first, but you think maybe he just has one of those spaces? Let me get this straight. One day you just appeared in the suburb. No memories except that you have some mysterious teleportation power. You dig through some unsuspecting chump's mail looking for clues. <clears throat> and through some ridiculous universal happenstance, you just so happen to stumble upon the most gullible fucking dork in the universe. Befriend him. Also, I'm there via text. Hagbert gives you a list of friends to visit. Out of all the choices available to you, myself included. And you go see Rose first. <laughs> what you're worried about? <laughs> uh, God, I fucking love Dave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rose fucking Lalonde. Even though we built up such a good rapport when I told John you weren't a real male man. <laughs> Called it, by the way. <laughs> Your first instinct is to visit the most heavily heavy-handed of all of us for some light kinship. <laughs> oh, you can tell that they're siblings. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I can't believe Rose is cooler than me. <laughs> uh, power move, I guess. Man, man, out here, what uh, wave dashing for friendship? <laughs> can't even spare a neutral A for old Strider, huh? Well, even back into the corner to spam your range attack for the D for the D man. Tragedy in two acts. Both acts are titled betrayal. <laughs> you have you definitely understand what is being said, and absolutely don't have to ask your friends what some cool, cool video game words are. You are one hundred percent not pulling the bolus. How do you do, fellow kids? The world has ever seen. Uh, besides, is this really the thing to be focusing on right now? You fucking wound me, mailman. Of course it is. Nothing is more, more, nothing is more important to me than this. They say that most humans only use 10% of their brain. It's because I'm using 90% of it to think, how dare you? <laughs> oh, that is the best fucking line Dave has said in a long damn time. <laughs> They say that most humans only use 10% of their brain. That's because I'm using 90% of it to think, how dare you? <laughs> that, that's, that's excellent. That's an excellent burn. I love that. <laughs> so anyway, you can really go anywhere? See anybody you want? Sounds nice. How dare? <laughs> For all but a moment, the act drops and you see the corners of his mouth tighten a little. The faded afternoon light uh, filters through his sunglasses at just enough of an angle to see his eyes shift ever so slightly towards the window. 
These subtle movements would surely be lost on most if you weren't so focused on trying to read him, or even just slightly further away, you may have missed it yourself. There's almost a loneliness in, in his voice. It must be hard to live here by yourself, so far away from the people you care about. It's possible that you've been so focused on trying to blindly make friends that you've forgotten gotten then then in front of you is a real that, that you've forgotten then in front of you is a real living person. You can't help but wonder if there is something you can do. You said you can take people with you, right? Like if you could teleport John around. Would that work with anybody? This is it. The path to this kid's heart is clear as day. Uh, fuck what you said just now. That friendship juice is so close you can practically fucking taste it. You try not to look excited, <laughs> affecting Dave's cool persona as you say, Fuck yeah, you can take people with you. Uh, you scope out your you scope out your fingernails because uh, for some reason that is what you do when you're acting cool. This works to the full extent it can, coming from someone who not but seven seven minutes and thirty two seconds earlier was rolling around on the floor damp with their own tears. Did he have some place in mind? Anywhere anywhere away from bro. <laughs> anywhere away from bro. Yeah. I mean I got some ideas I could bounce off you, I guess. Is Dave gonna come with us to see Jade? Oh th this would be the best. Please come along. Come along with me. How do you feel about... Shh. With a swift finger to his mouth, you cut him off. He doesn't seem to like that very much, uh, but you still consider it a successful maneuver. There's no need for words between friends. It's a great app, by the way. <laughs> uh, no, wait, it's words with friends, not between friends. Uh, you know just where he wants to go. Just think really hard about it. Think about where you want to be, Dave. Think about what is important to you. Think about what you really want. It will be more magical this way. Friendship is magic, after all. You just made that up right now. Don't look it up. <laughs> Damn, guess that's true. He closes his eyes and you put a hand on his shoulder. This is it. Putting your trust in the magic of friendship, you focus the power externally as much as you are able. Flashes of distance, but somehow familiar images course through you. The quiet stillness of the suburbs, the smell of the forest, the heat of an apartment rooftop, the ocean breeze. Take us to Jade. You extend it outwards as much as you are able. This is his rodeo. You are merely the... Vehicle. What the... Hmm. Is that Hussy in the background? And a bunch of other... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's James Roach. Yeah, these are, these are all totally programmers. That's, that's my initial guess, anyway. Oh. There's that, uh... Are we in an Olive Garden? Vehicle. What the fuck? Oh, fuck yes. The two of you stand near a sign that says, Please wait to be seated. A very cheery hostess has a brief exchange with Dave and ushers the two of you to an open table. This totally is Olive Garden, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, hell fucking like yes. There's no mistaking it. About to get my motherfucking breadstick on? This is absolutely an Olive Garden! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. The Pokemon freaking chat was joking about being an Olive Garden. <laughs> Now you know what it's like to be the seer of jokes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. When you hear your family, dog. While you're still new to this, you can't really seem to detect any irony in his voice. He thought for sure he'd want to go see his friends. He thought he had them figured out. First and last mistake, mailman. But you'll learn. I'm a mystery. Got that mis got that history. Fucking with the plot, my flow is so hot they leave you <laughs> they leave you looking blistery. Racially ambiguous. <laughs> my rhyme's contagious. Uh, the OG with my homie where the breadsticks are conti continuous. You don't know what the fuck it You don't know what the fuck you just let him go. You know what? 
fuck it. You let him go for a while. You don't even know if that last lump one rhymed, but fuck it. You aren't you. But fuck it if you aren't charmed by this little bastard. <laughs> you lean back in your chair and just absorb it all, sitting in the worst restaurant imaginable with your new rapping teen friend, while the other patrons do their best to ignore this, his incredible rhymes. After a short while, Dave abruptly stops freestyling, and you open your eyes. Oh, fuck, you know what time it is? No, your sprite doesn't have a watch drawn on it. It's breadstick 30. No watch necessary. Fuck me, I love breadsticks. I love breadsticks, too. I'm gonna get some breadsticks after this. Never talk about it. This is a very real and hidden character trait that nobody knows about me. <laughs> well, that sounds like a very real and hidden character trait that nobody knew about him. And we are certainly not finding this out now because of a series of seemingly unrelated events that possibly changed the continuity of this universe, allowing these sorts of otherwise narratively unimportant details to shine through. Wow, he is really going to town on these breadsticks. Maybe this is all friendship needs to be. Spending some quality face time with a, so with a solid bro and just absolutely decimating some bombless breadsticks at a bad chain, at a bad chain Italian restaurant. Maybe the real lesson here is friendship. Are we really going to do? Maybe the maybe the real friends were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> That's, maybe the real lesson here is friendship doesn't have to be a grand gesture or a high adventure. Maybe the real friends. I understand you're having a moment, but I'm absolutely going to eat your breadsticks if you don't stop talking about friend about what friendship means to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Whatever you want. <laughs> Get that bread, son. <laughs> Uh. Uh. <laughs> the the striders are just imprints of hussy at particular times, so of course he likes breadsticks? Yeah, that's <laughs> uh it's not inaccurate. <laughs> that is not inaccurate. Uh maybe the real friends were the bread chips we shoved into our purses along the way. <laughs> And yeah, give it a hand to James Roach, because the music in that segment was phenomenal. Like, like there were just a lot of Dave's themes woven into that uh, whole route there. Oh, that was a great one. Okay. Let's see, well, let's see how everything goes to shit. Alright, don't wear the shirt. <laughs> let's see how this goes. Actually, you think you're fine as is. No reason to shake it up with yet another outfit you'll have to eventually pay someone to draw. Let's take a second. Reel in for a little bit. What the fuck is going on here? Is this, like, really messed up? No, what's messed up? Is how... Is how you deny my hospitality like this? I offer you someone else's property that you have to find hidden among countless lifeless puppet corpses. And this is the thanks I get? Real cold, mailman. Damn, maybe I'll wear the shirt to protect me from this chill. Ah, enough, okay. Like, why isn't he in school? It's the middle of April. Spring break, bro. Besides, I only subscribe to the School of Hard Knocks. Also, several YouTube channels and periodicals. 2009 was before YouTube, was, YouTube channels were really a thing. Or at least it was... I mean, like, YouTube was a thing in 2009. I just don't remember, like, subscribing to people's YouTube channels back then. I mean, they were they existed, but, you know, it wasn't a thing, like... It, it wasn't a thing to the, to, the, to the degree that it is now. Uh, so, pretty sweet deal over here, actually. You know he isn't really like this. You know he doesn't like living like this. Oh, damn. Is that true? What am I like? Apparently, we got the foremost expert on Dave lore here. PhD in Strider Dynamics. It's the first day of school and I'm here in class, here to learn. Got my pencil out, got my freshest fit on. Got my dope new Trapper Keeper with the Lisa Frank Dolphins on it. Look at them there, smiling like assholes. One blue, one pink, so we know it's not gay. Poor bastards don't know they're a cartoon. Saddest story I ever heard. <laughs> but, whoops. The little camera switches its focus from Dave back to you, gauging your reaction. Ignoring it, you assert, that you, you assert that you aren't trying to say you know him. Just that... That what? Okay, clearly you've struck some sort of nerve here, but... Nah, we're good. Tell me more about my situation. 
You really have been spending time with Rose, haven't you? Got me all figured out. Don't worry if you gotta look at the Wikipedia article for abandonment issues or whatever I can... Or whatever. I can wait. Despite how fat, flat his voice is coming out, his body language has made a telltale shift. He's standing leaning up against the back of the futon. His hands are in his pockets. It would almost seem like he is sulky if he weren't so convinced... If, if he weren't so convinced he wanted to kick your ass. What? Whoa, what the... Hang on. I saw that. Yeah, that was... It's Cal. It's fucking Cal. It's right there. Ooh. Fuck. Uh, yeah, this is just like wizard. Yeah, this is just like wizard uh, Rose's wizard route, except even worse because Cal is here. At the edge of your vision, you sense some movement. You didn't catch it exactly, but you're convinced it was there. You look over there, and there's nothing to be seen. Perhaps another little, another hidden camera. There's something unsettling about being watched this whole time. Get oh, shit. <sighs> there it is again. Every now and then, your eyes catch the faintest presence of something moving just out of sight. The whole face place feels like it's faintly shifting around you. I mean, ah, God, no, 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 <laughs> no, ah, oh, God, Jesus Christ, ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, that was that was genuine fear right there. That was real. Oh. Good lord, fuck me. Amid scanning the room, a particularly fucked up looking puppet catches your attention. These little shits are everywhere, but this awful little man staring stare stops but this little man's stare stops your heart for just a moment. Its cold eyes pierce you, its plastered smile judges you. You look at it as briefly as possible, if for no other reason than to note how unsettling it is before looking back at Dave. Looking back to Dave, he is already here. You... What the fuck? What? Oh, that's just Cal. Cal's the realist. <laughs> Certainly seems real to you. You could have sworn he just moved around on his own. <laughs> yeah, man, he does that. Don't think about it too hard. See, this is just what you need. Not that deep. Look, I know. Look, I know you got some hero complex or something. Gonna swoop in and save these kids from themselves. Well, bad news, kid. That's not. That's not what this is, and heroes aren't real. John, I understand, but fooling Rose too. The insane tricks this guy must have pulled. Dave has shifted his weight forward. While his voice has not risen above a low mumble, this is enough of a tell to know that, so that maybe you should back off. This friendship thing is tougher than you thought. You're still on about that, huh? Look, I'm no expert on friendship. Minus the fact that I absolutely am. <laughs> Bet you ever think maybe coming to someone's home and fucking with their life, let, let, with their day-to-day -day life is a little rude? Just a hypothetical. As per normal, I'm still cold, I'm still cold unbothered by this turn of events. A stoic bastion in the... You're sorry, but did he just say story? Stoic? I, I actually... Stoic. Stoic? What? Um, yeah? Stoic, like, unmoved. Does he mean stoic? I mean... <laughs> Uh, uh, he's pronouncing words wrong. It's a, you know what this is like. This is like um, in cri when Critical Role first started, uh, uh Matthew Mercer, M Matt, Matt Mercer didn't know how to say the word sigil because he only ever read it in books, and so for the first few episodes of Critical Role, he always pronounced it sigil. Um, and uh, Sam Regal still taunts him about it to this day. I mean, I guess. Oh, peas, you've done it now. You weren't trying to embarrass him, oh, jeez. You try and comfort him by saying that it's okay if, if he's never heard someone, anybody say the word before. Maybe he's only seen it in text. And this is seriously, like, being real, being real for a second. Like, th this is like a thing in this day and age now where we're all just texting each other constantly, is that, you know, nobody knows, it's like, there are so many words I have read but have never, like, said aloud. And so, like, 
this sort of thing is just much more common nowadays, that text has become a much more common form of communication. He frowns and goes quiet. This does not seem to be helping. The kid is completely shut off now. You try to bring up the puppets again. No dice. You even pretend to be super jazzed about Cal, or whatever his name was. Uh, seemingly shadow stepping around the apartment. Wow, so cool. Nothing. Dave takes out his phone and begins texting. Ah, is that about you? Aw, oh, Beans, is he telling your new friends how much you beefed it? This could ruin everything. <laughs> oh god, no. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and this is the most desperate time you can recall. A friendship is on the line. Cal continues to phase in and out of out like a poorly animated anime character moving so fast you aren't keeping up. He, you, take, you take a few steps towards Dave. You've got to get him out of here, and you know just where to take him. About half a second into your stealth mission, you clumsily step on a puppet, and it makes, makes a pathetic squeak. Dave stops for a second, but after a few moments, returns to texting at the speed of sound to whoever is on the other end. Cheese and crackers, you can hear the notification sounds popping off. Whoever it is is responding back. You can't waste any more time. You teleport to him as silently as you can. Besides, uh, besides you, Cal's disgusting limp body flips out. Beside, beside you, bleh. Besides you, Cal's disgusting, lifeless, limp body flops haphazardly on top of a shelf. Guess he's... done? No, 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 no time for this. You slowly reach out your hand. Time to get out of here and fix this. A large adult hand grabs you by the wrist. You turn to see it belongs to a muscular man in pointy sunglasses and oh, fuck. Well, you wouldn't exactly describe as a twink, and not exactly a hunk, but most certainly not a bear, either. In fact, why don't we talk about it for several- OH SHIT! <laughs> Before you can begin your extremely important debate, you are flung unceremoniously out of a high-rise apartment complex window. <laughs> As you free fall, you think maybe he is more of a th maybe he's more of a thunk a thunk a, th a twunk. <laughs> Downfall. <laughs> uh, so that's so that's this failure. Uh, it's probably the most hilarious failure we've had so far. Uh, hurled out of a window ball, distracted by bro's abs. <laughs> Alright. That was good. That was a fantastic route. Uh, probably my favorite one of the three so far. Um, next Fortnite, I guess, is Jade. And probably just Jade? Actually, you know... It would be fairly thematic, all things considered, for it to be uh, a twofer with Jade and Carcat. That wouldn't be, that would not be the weirdest pair to uh, pair them up. Although, because like, cause, like there's supposed to be ten of these updates, right? And they got to get through twenty kids or something like that, or like eight updates and twenty kids, something like that. So, like, they can't be very many of these one-off uh, sets. We're gonna get like, we're gonna get some sets of like three, three or four later. Okay, oh, 14 updates for 20 people. Okay, so we might get more, uh, we get, might get a lot more one-offs. Carcat is after date. Yeah, that that's my theory, is that, like, my guess is that we're going to go in order that the characters were introduced in Homestuck. So it's going to be, so it's going to be, uh, you know, so, oh yeah, the math would work out for that. Like, all I can, well, no, that doesn't work out because, uh, it's like somebody said, uh, the eight kids alone plus the twelve trolls and pair, fair, pairs, but that math doesn't work because we already had Rose and John together. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll either be Jane after Jade or it'll be Carcat, and my guess is Carcat because that's the order that um, everybody was introduced to in Homestuck, and then after Carcat, I do not remember the exact order the trolls were all introduced, especially because like. Their introductions were all mixed up, or like we saw them before we saw them and didn't get to know their names, but uh, yeah, whatever. So, like, after Carcat will probably be paired with my guess is either Terezi or uh, Kanaya, since those were two of the other early trolls who appeared for anime. Anyway, oh, Gamji was that? Oh, yeah, Gamji was after, uh, was the first named troll after Carcat. Um, so, yeah, anyway. But that's not, but that's speculation for the future. Anyway, like I said, that was a great route. The music was great. Dave was great. Uh, the the unseen cameo by Bro was hilarious. Um, and this is the image that we are leaving off with. Um, 
poor MSPA reader being distracted by the sexy. All right. And with that, I'm calling you a good night. Uh, this will be up on YouTube in the next couple days, and then I'll see you next time I see you. Bye-bye.